So I was having a massive crisis of confidence in this game that I'm working on. I was designing characters, there's enemies and players and all this stuff. I made a level generator so that like, I couldn't anticipate what was coming up. And I was expecting it to be really fun. And like in the initial test, it was really fun. But as I played, I was developing this super dominant strategy and I can demonstrate it here. So you walk around, you can't see the enemies and then you see an enemy and realistically there's what, three, three enemies here. I can't kill them all this turn. My goal is to kill the enemies without taking any damage. So like if I run up to this enemy, I'll be able to hit it, but then my turn is over. This character can't do enough damage to kill the other two. So every single time you end up in a combat scenario, you will aggro the enemies, and then you will back up to the choke point, and then you will end your turn, and the enemies will walk over to you, and then you will go and engage with them. And this happened no matter what the scenario was. Occasionally, you would only aggro one enemy, um, and you would end up just like walking up to it and just one-shotting it. But in the vast majority of cases, you would just see an enemy back up to a choke point, super, super boring. And I was like very concerned because like I was acutely aware that no one has really done sort of like an XCOM like melee focused game. And I was like, all right, what if this just doesn't work? And so I hit up the artist I'm working with, Travis, on this. And I was talking to him and he was showing me some games that he thinks are maybe kind of similar. And I was like, no, I don't know. Like, I feel like this is... It's impossible thing. I was thinking, we do we have to like restructure the whole game? Do we have to, you know, make it so that maybe you spawn in the middle of a bunch of enemies, or it's like a wave attack thing where like enemies come at you from all sides? Um, and you know, maybe we will change the structure eventually. But he was showing me this other game, um, and I noticed that the thing that made it different from the game I'm working on is this. It was like this insanely obvious thing. So the artificial intelligence that, intelligence that drives the enemies, uh, it's like a preferential choice-making system where the enemy most wants to do one of its abilities. Um, if it can't do any of its abilities, it would run up to the player. And if it can't get to the player for some reason, it would just do like a self-buff thing, like sort of like a basically just pass its turn. Um, and that was the, the whole enemy AI. And it seemed logical at the time. It was like very easy to implement. Um, but the result of this is that if you could get far enough away from an enemy that it could not get to you and attack on the same turn, you would end up in this huge tactical profit that was impossible to ignore. Like I just want to, you know, if an, if an enemy's far enough away that I can't kill it this turn, I want it to spend its turn moving to me and it will do that for me every single time. And the chain, the thing that I needed to do was literally just make it so the enemies will only go up to you if they can attack you. It's like so mind-numbingly stupid that the enemy, like I even thought that the enemies should walk up to you. They, they would literally walk like straight up to you like this and do nothing because they had spent all of their movement actions moving up to you, which is like from a tactical perspective, pointlessly stupid and so this tiny change i just applied it in the in this time that i booted up the game has made the game so much more interesting there's obviously like still a ton of work to be done to uh to really make this game have the depth that i wanted to have but, like let's say literally just this one enemy so, i mean like this is a bad example i can just walk up to this enemy and punch it um let me see if i can find a slightly more interesting room here to demonstrate all right so yeah this is this is a perfect example so i have aggroed this demon he will shoot fireballs at me from a distance and normally what i would do is i would then backtrack into the yellow area and he would do a very doofy looking run animation and run up to me and i would just be able to deal with him from close range um but that's basically pointless right now um if i run away i'm in the same spot like it, it, I, he would just not come up to me and i mean i guess i could do that as an example like he'll literally just do nothing on his turn and now it's my turn again, and uh, he's still there. So like now I have a tactical decision to make. How can I get to him and kill him without him dealing damage to me? So let's see if I can do something interesting here. I'm going to go here. I would like to use my mind swap ability to change places with him, to put him where this guy is, and then have this guy come out and punch him. Um, but I only have like a 50-50 shot of actually landing it. So I've missed, 
um, which isn't great. I'm going to put my bruiser just in front of her, just so she doesn't get hit. Um, and now I can go in and punch him. And I think this really represents what has to be like a fundamental shift in the way that I'm thinking about this game. It's because usually I'm used to making sort of old school first person shooters where the enemies don't have to be smart. The enemies generally have very simple abilities and patterns and it's about mixing the enemies in interesting ways and building interesting environments around enemies with simple abilities. Like an enemy that literally just runs up to you and explodes is an interesting enemy in an old school first person shooter because you have to do interesting things to avoid that. If you combine that with simple turrets and, you know, AOE effects and stuff, you end up with a really interesting system. But in something like this, where it's all tactical and you're not hit with a lot of things at once, it's not about reaction time. The enemy has to think tactically because if the enemy isn't thinking tactically, there is no onus on the player to think tactically. I only have to be as smart as the AI is. So there's a lot of pressure on the AI to make intelligent choices. And there's obviously still a lot of design comes into play in terms of making the enemies interesting as well. But I think if the core AI isn't making those decisions intelligently, it's basically taking all of the work I spend making the enemies themselves interesting and throwing it out. And that's literally it. I, uh, I obviously gonna do a lot more stuff to make the enemy artificial intelligence more interesting and continue to add more interesting abilities and stuff and different aspects to the levels to make it more interesting. But uh, I was just like, it was such a crazy aha moment. It was one of those things where I was like, how, how am I possibly gonna fix this concept? Is it unsalvageable? Do I have to just cancel this project? Um, and I, I, I was clinging to it. Travis always makes fun of me for always abandoning our projects too easily and saying that designs can't be remedied. Um, so, you know, we were sitting on a call with him. We were just going through inspiration and examples and thought experiments. And uh, we came to this conclusion that, uh, you know, maybe I should have come to when I was writing the artificial intelligence in the first place. But I did not. And uh, this, this, is, this is what happened to me. I hope this was interesting for somebody out there. It sure was for me.